Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. My name is Pastor Johnston Sakwa, coming to you live on the Scripture Prescription this amazing but wonderful morning. I know that we are privileged to have this great opportunity to be blessed of the pastor. I want to pray and then we'll hear the word of the Lord this morning. Father, we bless you, we honor you, we thank you, and we give you glory. Thank you for this privilege and opportunity that you have given us to listen to your voice. I pray this morning that your Father, you, that your word will find a place in our hearts, O oh God. It will give us reason for life. It will give us the motivation to continue to pursue that which you have laid before us, O oh God. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Good morning. Now, I want to speak about a subject, uh, life stewardship. Life stewardship. In other words, the Lord has given us the gift of life. The most and simple important thing is how have you lived your life or how are you living your life? And I want to read a story in the Bible given by Jesus in the book of Matthew chapter number 25. The book of Matthew chapter number 25. We are reading from verse number 14. Remember, the subject matter is life stewardship. For the kingdom of heaven is a man traveling in a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto him unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another he gave two talents, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he had received the five talents, went and treaded with the same, and made them five other talents. And likewise he had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one, went and digged into the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came in and reckoned with them. And so he had received five talents, came and brought forth other five talents, saying, The Lord has delivered unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things, I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. He also had the seed two talents came to and said, Lord, thou delivered unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast made faithful over a few things. I'll make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Then he who had received one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strode. And I was afraid, and went and hid the talent in the earth. Lo, there thou that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant. Thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not sowed. Thou ought therefore to have put my money to the exchanges, and then at my coming I should have received my own azary or interest. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it to him that has ten talents. For unto everyone that has shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that has, has not shall be taken away even that which he has, and cast the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is a story that speaks about the end. It is in the present, but verse number 20 talks about, And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, that there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That can only be a place described in the Bible as hell. So this story is in the present, but talks about the future. So you need to understand that you are a steward of your life. Now as you live, God allows us to live how we want. God allows us to do the things we want. God has given us the liberty to make choices concerning our lives. 
whether one to observe and live a life that is pleasurable to him, whether one to follow his word, whether one to commit our lives to be a life that can be read by all men. Bible tells us we are written epistles to be read by all men. So your life is being read. My life is being read. And so the Bible talks about uh, life stewardship. Now, based on the capacity that God has given to you as a human being, how well have you utilized the capacity that God has given you to live? What have you done? What do you continue to do? What are your aspirations, your dreams, your purpose, your future? What is it you're looking at? Now look, the person who was given five talents invested more and brought five more talents. The one who was given two invested and brought in two more talents. But there's a story about this guy who was given only one talent and begins to say, I, I, I know that you master wants to reap where you have not sowed. There are people who are saying they cannot confine themselves to having the, the capacity to follow God. They, for instance, say they want to enjoy life. They want to live life recklessly without looking at what God speaks in their lives. You are like this guy who was given one talent. He took the talent, went and hid in the ground. When the master came, he said, take back your one talent because I knew you are an unjust man. Now, this is a bad, you know, a bad mindset. That the only thing that you see is that the other person only wants to benefit from you. The guy with the five talents made five talents more. At the end of the day, he was rewarded with the, not only the five talents he made, even this one talent that was never invested by the third guy was given back to the guy with the ten talents. Praise the Lord. What am I saying this morning? You are a steward of your life. You can live the way you choose. You can live the way you want. You can have your mindset. You can have the way, what you say, my way of life. This is how I do my things. This is how I want to do this. I want to speak. I want to enjoy myself. But let me tell you, when the time of judgment comes, you shall give your life as a report before God. Now, does God intend to oppress us? No. Does God intend to deprive us things of this life? No. All you need to know is that God has a purpose for you. You have a purpose in this earth. You have a purpose in society. You have a purpose for your family, a purpose for business, a purpose for professionalism in the name of Jesus. So you must understand how to steward, to be a good steward of your life. The first thing you must take care of is your life. When you live right, when you do the right thing, then I can guarantee without any shadow of doubt that God will at the end of the day reward you. Don't live a reckless life. Don't live a life without a careless abandon. Live a life that you can be consistently thinking about what would God say about my life? What would God do? And this morning, it's a call for thinking again Reflecting about our lives, reflecting about your life, ask yourself the difficult questions. Am I living right? Am I doing that which is expected of me? Is this what God wants of me? Is this what God has created me to be? Am I at the place of my best? Am I doing my very best to ensure that God is greatly ministering to my life? Am I doing what is expected? Am I doing what God desires of me? Am I doing what God wants from me? Am I at my best or do I need to do even better? That is the question. And you are a steward of your life. Are you going to invest the five talents? Are you going to invest the two talents? Or are you going to behave like the man who did not want to invest at all because he felt that the master was unjust? Everything we do, the life that we live, we are going to be accountable someday. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I want to ask you this morning that you continue to look into Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, you are the steward of your life. Do your very best to ensure that you bring to pass the realities of God in your life. May the good Lord be with you. The good Lord bless you and the good Lord stand with you. This is my prayer in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you this morning. 
And we ask that, Lord, you make us good stewards in the name of Jesus. Help us, Father, to do that which is expected of us for the glory and honor of your name. We bow before you, we honor you, and we thank you. This we pray, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. This has been your host, Pastor Johnston Sakwa, coming to you live on the Scripture Prescription, your daily morning dose of the word of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Shalom. The good Lord bless you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen.